Hello everyone, Kirk here. Today I'm going to introduce you to an exciting new set of programs we're offering at EMAP Instruction. They come from an Australian company by the name of F of X and they are, quite frankly, the most powerful and easy tools I've ever used to create high quality math graphics. Since I write a lot of math textbooks, I need to make a lot of diagrams, graphs, and number lines. And these programs are a lifesaver. There are way, way too many features to show in one short video, so I'm only going to illustrate a few of them today. I have what's known as the FX Math Pack on my computer, which contains four programs, FX Draw, FX Stat, FX Graph, and FX Equation. Now, these programs work independently of any word processor you may use, so you can create standard graphics files in every single one of them that then can be imported into any presentation software you need or into any kind of um, word processing document. But they also integrate flawlessly on both PC and Mac with either Word or Pages. Now, I do most of my work, my writing on Word, so I'm going to pop over there now to show you exactly how they work. Notice at the top of Word, we see the typical tabs that ha Word has in them, the Home tab, Insert, etc. And all the way over on the right, we have an F of X tab. And as you saw, all programs, all four programs from the FX Math Pack are sitting there. FX Stat, FX Graph, FX Equation, and FX draw. Now, although four, all four programs are great in their own right, I'm going to be showing you today a little bit on FX draw and on FX stat. Here, I'm trying to make one of the most diverse worksheets ever with a variety of problems from algebra, geometry, and statistics. And I'm going to create diagrams for each one of these problems that would have taken me perhaps an hour, if not more, time before I had FX Math Pack. But now, they're going to take me only about five minutes in total. Granted, they may take a little bit longer because I'm walking you through the process. I'm going to show you a few different things you can do. But all in all, I could do all four of these in about five minutes. So, let's create a number line inequality graph. All right. In problem number one, I've constructed just a basic, basic multiple choice question. And I'm going to create a number line graph for it. And I'm going to go into FX Draw to do that. I'm going to just choose the float option. All right, and I'm gonna expand the FX Draw palette. Now, over here on the left, you can see all sorts of different tools, and I'd love to show you how all of these work right now. But I'm just gonna pop into this and grab a number line, and I'm gonna stretch it out along the palette. All right, that's a nice number line, but I need to actually have it also graph that inequality. I'm gonna make it choice three, which was negative two is less than or equal to x less than five. And what I'm gonna do is right now, my default setting is for my number line to go from negative eight to eight, but I'd like it to go from negative 10 to 10. You can change defaults as a, at any time by just hitting set as default, which I just did. Now that's all fine, but I still don't have that inequality graphed. So I'm gonna write in negative two is less than or equal to x, which is less than five. Now, just like all software programs, the F of X programs do take a little bit of time to get up to speed, but I've found them amazingly intuitive. In other words, my first guess about how to enter something is almost always right because the F of X folks have made it so easy. Let's take a look. And there it is, right? I'm gonna click X and it immediately shows up in Word for me. Granted, in completely the wrong place. So I'm gonna bring it all the way up here. And that's okay, but it's a little bit large, so I'm just gonna shrink it down to the size I want. And there we go. All right, I like that number line. Now you might be a little bit worried because when you shrunk it, perhaps the, the font size on those numbers got a little bit small. It looks pretty good to me. But to go back in and modify it, all we have to do is right click on the object or double click with our left button. Go in and edit our FX draw object. What I'll do is I'll click on this. I'll change my font size. Maybe I wanna make it really large. Maybe I've got some struggling readers in class. So I bring it up to a 16 point font. I click 
and there it is. You can make that inequality line darker if you want. You can modify it in many, many different ways, including adding color if what you're doing is just creating a presentation. All right, let's do a little bit of graphing. In number two, what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a graph of a parabola and have kids choose amongst four multiple choice answers for it. And again, I'm going to use FX Draw for this. So let me click into FX Draw. Again, I'm going to use a float so I can put it anywhere I want. Coming right back down here, I'm going to grab a function graph and stretch it open. Now, if you notice, what it did is it put a piece of graph paper there that's negative 10 to 10 in both directions. And I've also got the sort of major grid lines highlighted at the fives. You don't have to do that. You can set your defaults any way you want. So now all I'm going to put in is y equals 9 minus x squared, which is what I wanted. And it's going to give me that nice parabola. f of x, of course, will graph as many curves as you'd like. So if I was trying to create a systems problem, I might do something like this. And then I would have both of them there. I can easily label these with text and all sorts of things. I can also put points in. Let me get rid of this line. And perhaps I want to put the y-intercept in. and the x intercepts in. And there they are. Let me x out of here and minimize it. Again, if you went and printed this out and you felt like the color didn't come out as much or the darkness of the lines didn't come out as well, you could always go back in and change any settings you want. The darkness of the grid lines, the darkness of the line that you're graphing, the size of the points that are graphed, and it's as easy as just double clicking on that graph. All right, let's take a look at a geometry problem. In number three, I've got one of these classic parallelograms. I'm going to have a diagonal drawn in, some perpendiculars, all sorts of stuff. I'll save you the details. Let's go back into FX Draw. By the way, if you're starting to feel like FX Draw is the most powerful of all the four programs, you're probably right. It's got a ton of things in it, including lots of geometry tools over here. We've already seen some tools down here that include functions, statistical graphs, 3D objects, normal distribution curves, Venn diagrams, number lines, etc. But let's do a little bit of geometry. So I'm going to go up here and grab a parallelogram and throw it in. It doesn't have to be of any particular size for me. Now I wanted to label that parallelogram. So I go up and I start putting text boxes in. I had a parallelogram labeled A, B, C, and D. And there we go. I don't particularly like where the lettering obviously is for A, so I just use a selection tool and drag it wherever I want it to go. There we go. Now, f of x will automatically letter important points on figures if you want it to. I oftentimes want to control the lettering, so I just insert text boxes. Now, I needed to draw in a diagonal, so I'll go up here and grab a line segment, and I'm just going to stretch it across. Do you notice how that figure is lighting up in red? f of x has what's called geometrically aware drawing. So it will try to anticipate what you want to do, and that makes drawing geometric diagrams so much easier. For instance, I'd like to now draw a perpendicular line from point A down to that diagonal. And notice what's happening, right? It's doing all sorts of things. There it's bisecting angle A. Here it's perpendicular to segment BD. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Now, I really just want that perpendicular drawn down to the diagonal, so I'm going to place a point there point at the intersection. Okay. Actually, I don't think that point quite got at the intersection, so I'm going to delete it really quickly. Let's do that one more time. There it is. And now, strangely enough, I'm actually going to delete that line. But I can now draw a line easily from that point up to A. And if I don't like that point there, I can delete it. Let me do the same thing. I'm going to go from C out here. I'm going to put a point at the intersection, delete my segment, delete, whoops, I didn't want to do that, hit control Z, my point is back, and 
and I've got my two perpendiculars, which I did have labeled. So I believe that was point E, and that was point F. I'm pretty happy with where those letters are, but I think I'm going to move E just a little bit. Now, I'm also going to throw in some right angle markings here and here. Now, normally that would be pretty tough if we were just doing this in Microsoft Word or some other package, but f of x makes it as easy as easy can be. Ah, oh, that's great. It's a little bit big, so I'll grab my select tool, I'll click on that right angle marker, and I'll just shrink it down to the size I want it. I'm going to do the same thing here and still a little bit large, or at least larger than the last one, and there I have it. Let me X, bring it to where I want it. Oh boy, I grabbed both of them. I didn't want that. And now I've got a beautiful diagram. Think about how long it might take to make that geometry diagram if you were doing it with just the preloaded tools that come on Microsoft Word. All right, let's take a look at a statistics graph. Now, in number four, I didn't set up the whole problem, but we've got Mrs. Jackson. She's 120 freshmen whose heights are recorded in units of inches. The distribution of their heights is shown in a dot plot. Or maybe we want a histogram. Regardless, for this, I'm going to use FX stat. Let's go into FX stat and do a floating diagram. And what you'll notice now as we go into FX stat is that it's going to look a little bit different than FX draw, considerably different. Here we can put in data, and we can put in data the way that you would just enter it manually. Apparently I really like 25s and 60s. But one of the beautiful things about FX stat is that it will generate data for you. So what I wanted was I wanted to generate some data for kids' heights. And, you know, maybe I put in a reasonable mean, 64 inches. A reasonable standard deviation, let's say, is 5 inches. We had 120 students, and I think I'm just going to have their heights to the nearest integer. I'm going to put my results in column A because I might want to generate multiple columns of data, maybe with different uh, distributions. I hit OK, and there's my data. Take a look at that. Isn't that great? If I highlight column A and I take a look, I can even go up here and see a bunch of relevant statistics. You might remember that I said that the mean should be 64, but it wasn't quite exactly 64, and that's because f of x is randomly generating this set of data. Now, we don't have any graph there, and that's because we haven't told it to graph. We can make almost any graph under the sun. Look at all these univariate graphs, then bivariate, even trivariate graphs. Right now, let's stick with this histogram. I know it said it was a dot plot, but we all like histograms too. I'm going to go up, click on this question mark. I'm going to put in column A. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. That's actually not so bad, right? That's a nice histogram, but it was kind of auto-generated. All I have to do is right-click on this, and let's play around with it a little bit. I say that we start it at 50. And instead of having rectangles that have a width of 5, I say we have just widths of 1. That's not bad at all. In fact, why don't we keep that one? I don't think I need to start it at 50. I could just start it at 55. So let me do that. Ah, very nice. Now, you might not like that maroon color. That's okay. Lots of different things that we can change. Change the color there. Change the color there. Now imagine that you print this thing out and photocopy it. That might be a little bit too dark. So we can change the opacity. And I think the final thing for me is I want the lines around the rectangles a little bit darker. So I think I'll make them something like one and a half. Wow. Finally, hey, let's give it some, let's give it some titles. On the x-axis, we had height in inches. And on the y-axis, we have the number of students. All right, I like it. Let's X out of here. And we've got that histogram. Now, granted, 
The problem actually said we wanted a dot plot, not a histogram. So maybe we look at the histogram and go, nah, I'd rather have students think about this as a dot plot. How hard is it going to be to change it? Well, let me go right back in to my FX object. Let me expand this a bit. And let's take a look at how easy, easily we can change this. What if we just make it a dot plot? There's our dot plot. Look at that. And of course, there are millions of different things we can modify in that dot plot, including making the dots just purely black as opposed to gray like that. Um, but how wonderful is that? Making a dot plot on Microsoft Excel can be very, very difficult. Histograms aren't a piece of cake either, and yet FXStat makes them both as basically simple as putting the data set in. And you don't even have to put the data set in because it'll generate it for you. In my mind, the FX Math Pack is a set of four programs that no high school, college, middle school, even elementary school math department should be without. It will make creating mathematical diagrams fun, interesting. You can use these programs in mathematical demonstrations even in your class, especially the geometric tools in FX Draw. They are simply wonderful tools that save math teachers tons of time and give them the confidence to make high quality worksheets and assessments that their students need. You can find more information about these products by going to our website, www.emathinstruction.com and checking them out. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions whatsoever. There are also free download trials on the site. This has been a presentation by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler. And as always, keep thinking and keep solving problems.